Good morning. Welcome to Atkinson Congregational Church. We are the light on the hill where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome. A very special welcome to those of you who are visiting us for the first time or the first time in a long time. We're very glad that you could join us this morning. We invite you to find out more about the light on the hill on our website, atkinsoncc.org, or on our Facebook page. Uh, this service is also live streamed. Uh, and so we welcome those of you who are joining us online. There's a comment box underneath the live stream. We invite you to check in and let us know that you're worshiping with us today. I have quite a few announcements this morning, not the least of which is uh, we welcome the Clunans back this morning for the baptism of Camden, who just had his birthday yesterday. Is that right? Yes. Uh, so we're very happy that they're with us this morning. The baptism will be coming up later in the service. Uh, new church directories are available. There's uh, some in the narthex. If you want to order Easter flowers, you can get tulips, mini daffodils, or pansies. There's an order form for those as well. You can fill out and turn in. Uh, Kids Club, next Sunday, April 3rd, April 17th, which is Easter and May 1st, are the next three Kids Clubs. Uh, all kids are welcome. You can bring a friend. Uh, we welcome volunteers to help us operate the Kids Club, which happens in our uh, Christian Education Annex. Not really, it's the other building right over here. It just needs a fancier name, maybe. Uh, we did Max Oreo Soup to Go Sunday for his Eagle Scout project. It was supposed to run from 11 to 1, and it was so successful that we'd sold out of everything by 11.10. So uh, Max, we're gonna do it again next Sunday. Uh, April 3rd, following worship, so 11 until they run out. Hopefully it'll last a little more than 10 minutes. Uh, and we've got chicken noodle, minestrone, clam chowder, broccoli cheddar, and lots of other good things will be on the menu. $5 for to-go pint, including crackers and cookies. So that'll be next Sunday. So uh, you've got next week's, the week after next, lunches all sorted out. You just have to come get some soups. Uh, this summer... We're hoping to restart our Vacation Bible Camp after a two-year hiatus, uh, and we're actively searching for someone to be the camp director. Uh, camp is going to be the week of June 20th this summer, half days, Monday through Thursday. Uh, it is a paid position, so if you know anyone that is interested in that position, you can uh, contact the office or Kristen, wave Kristen, uh, and uh, if you want to know more about it and more information will be coming out about camp soon. Uh, I invite you to stay for coffee hour after worship. It's in Lovejoy Hall, which is behind me, sort of bang a U-turn out that end of the sanctuary and around. And Linda, you have an announcement this morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Linda Jowett, and I'm here representing the um, small committee that has been formed to uh, look into ways we can celebrate the church's 250th anniversary. We had our first meeting last week. We could really use some help. Um, the committee brainstormed uh, many inspiring creative ideas that highlight our wonderful church and its history. It's a really great opportunity to um, showcase our church to the community. Um, we have some uh, fun, informative, creative, celebratory, and um, like I said, it's really a chance to shine the light on our church. Um, our official, unofficial theme is the past, the present, and the future. Um, like I said, we're a really small group, and we could really use some help to make it really go off with a bang. So if you're interested, you can either see me after church, or our next meeting is April 19th at the library from 6.30 to 8. Thanks so much. Any other announcements this morning? Before we begin worship, just a reminder that our Lenten cross is up in the front corner of the sanctuary, and the Lenten cross gives us an opportunity to think about the events of Lent and Holy Week that led up to Easter, and uh, Lent is a time of reflection, and we are invited to reflect upon the things that keep us from a deeper relationship with God. And so during the Lenten season, at any time you're invited to come up after worship, before worship, there's a hammer and nails there on the small table, and you're invited to hammer a nail into the cross that, and leave behind on the cross maybe that trait or characteristic or thing that gets in the way of you having a more fuller relationship with God. 
Uh, soon that'll be up all through Lent. And then on Easter, the nails may be gone and you may see something else. If you are with us virtually, we invite you to participate in that ritual as well. You can leave a comment in the comment box or email the office or call the office and we will gladly put a nail into the cross for you. So just let us know how, what you'd like us to do. All right, friends, we'll begin worship this morning with our call to worship, which we do every Sunday. The prayer is responsive, which means that you are invited to repeat back the words that are in bold print. Let us be in worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Do you feel it? God's kingdom is beneath our feet. Do you know it? God's reconciling love in Christ has shatters our way of viewing people. Do you believe it? God has made everything, including us, new. Our opening hymn this morning is, I will sing of your love, love, love. I invite you to stand as you are able and sing along the words that will be on the screen. Gracious God, we gather before you this day for many reasons. Some of us seek no more than the peace and fellowship of the sanctuary. Some of us are looking for encouragement as we walk the path that you have set before us. 
Others of us are hoping for a word from you, some wisdom, some sign that will help us through a period of difficulty or show us how to deal with a problem that we have. Still others of us are here because we think that it is the right thing to do, that it helps us and helps our families to grow together in love and understanding. God, there are many reasons we have before coming before you this morning. We ask your blessing upon us and pray that you will answer the need that is in each of us through Christ Jesus. Amen. We all know what our faults are, the way we have treated others, our alienation from each other and God, our unwillingness to be faithful. But we don't hide our sin and remain silent, but instead we confess them to the one who surrounds us with steadfast love. Please join me as we pray together our unison prayer of confession. On this very day, waiting God, we admit all the lengths to which we go so we might avoid you. You offer us that kingdom of joy and wonder, yet we would hide in places where temptation waits. You invite us to feast on your grace and peace, but we stubbornly refuse, because you also welcome those we call outsiders. We are quick to see all the mistakes that those around us make, but hope you will ignore our foolish choices. Celebrating God, Before we come to our senses, we find you running toward us, sweeping us up in your arms, tears of grace mingling with our cries of confession, a mighty river washing away our sinful ways to restore us to new life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we find no limitations on your grace, no reservations about your love, but a feast that overflows with wonder a place we can finally call home. God rolls away everything that stands in our way, our past, our sin, our pain, our hesitation, and reshapes us into new people living in the new creation. What wonderful grace we are forgiven. Well, this morning we have the joy of a baptism in worship, and so I uh, invite up Lisa and Blake. Clunan, as well as the godparents, Matthew Crampton, Carolyn Ray. Up here. And probably should bring Camden up, I guess. Let's go on, just like a line this way. Perfect. Friends, we come to this font of living water. As we do, let us recall the meaning of baptism. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, all made to drink of the same Spirit. They were bringing children to Jesus so that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them, But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the realm of God. Because truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the realm of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took them in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands upon them. Jesus came to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to make him change his mind, saying, I ought to be baptized by you. Yet you come to me. Jesus said, let it be so for now. For in this way we will do all that God requires. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water. The heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and lighting on him. 
Then a voice from heaven said, This is my own dear Son, with whom I am well pleased. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God, insomuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children. Baptism with water in the Holy Spirit is the, he agrees, is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. Lisa and Blake, do you desire to have your child baptized under the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Lisa and Blake, Matthew, and Carolyn, will you encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and receive the freedom of life in Christ? If so, say, we will with the help of God. Will you teach this child that he may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, say, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? If so, say, we do with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the Christian faith, to help this child to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, furthering Christ's presence in the world, and offering the nurture of Christian Church so that he may affirm his baptism? If so, say, we do with the help of God. (laughs) Members and friends of Atkinson Congregational Church, I invite you to stand as you are able. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the one about to be baptized as he lives and grows in Christ? If so, say, we promise our love, support, and care. We promise our love, support, and care. Let us pray. Bless by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in Camden. Baptize this day that he may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Kevin, do you want to come over here? Yeah, buddy. Oh, you're so heavy. <laughs> By what name will this child be called? Camden Blake Clunan. Camden Blake Clunan. Come here, buddy. Let's go this way. What do you think? Oh, you can still see. There you go. Camden Blake Clunan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and let all God's people say, Amen. 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 This is a hardinger. It's knit by the ladies of the church, and it's meant as a keepsake of this moment. Please join me in our responsive prayer for the baptized. We give you thanks, Holy One, Mother and Father of all the faithful, for this your child, and for the grace acknowledged here today in the water and the Holy Spirit. Embrace us all as sons and daughters in the one household of your love. Grant us grace to receive, nurture, and befriend this new member of the body of Christ and strong member of the body of Christ. There we go. (laughs) Give to the baptized baptized. strength Strength for life's journey, journey. courage in time of suffering, suffering. the joy of faith, Please join me as we, oh, first, let's congratulate this family on Camden. Hey, buddy. And as, as we normally do here, we're going to sing, I was there to hear your morning cry. The words will be on your screen. I'm going to walk Camden around if you'll let me and say hi to everybody.
First scripture reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians, and our reader is Ann Williams. So this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start at, and is created new. The old life is gone, a new life burgeons. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him, and then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and to enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He is already a friend to you. How, you ask? In Christ. God put the wrong on him and never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. The word of the Lord. Now enter into our time of prayer and we'll begin that with the sharing of the prayer request we received over the past week and also those shared in person this morning. And I invite Anne to continue. <laughs> Pray for peace. For Connie, Cooper, Mel, Cheryl, Maria, Julie, Jenny B, and Bernie. Guidance and a healing path for me. 
joy, healing, a healthy path, and a job for Ricky. Nick, Rocky, AJ, CJ, Lolo, Paige, and Jeffrey Todd. Kim and Robert, Sybil and Paul. The Kamets and our department. Genevieve and Danabeth. For Sasha, a Russian citizen whose friends in Ukraine lost everything in the bombing and escaped to Chicago, awaiting cardiac surgery for father. George V. for healing, a very special wife and daughter. Answered prayers, Emily, Clay, and Daisy. Mary and Jimmy, great health and safe travel. Prayers for Linda as she completes medical testing and prepares for treatment. Prayers for comfort, strength, and peace. Special friend Nancy that her surgery finally gets scheduled and will be very successful. Birthday, birthday blessings this week for David, Elizabeth, and Calvin. Birthday blessings for Julie, Palazma, Jim, and Janet, and families. Peace and love for Marina, and Shakri and their countries. Prayers for Ukraine and her people. <coughs> Prayers for my parents. Healing progress for George, Mel, Geraldine, Paige, Steph, Kristen, Palm, Andy, and Rob. H. Jean, Joan, and Barbara, Barbara good health. <coughs> Our country and our heroes, and for Jenny. Prayers to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you today aware of how you call us to be like you, remembering that you made us in your own image, that you entrusted to us this world and all that is in it, that you gave us brothers and sisters and parents, people to love and to enjoy and to work for and pray for. God, make us messengers of your reconciling love, ambassadors of your kingdom, people who show your grace and celebrate with your joy. Father and mother of us all, we pray today for those of our brothers and sisters who have misused you and the rest of our family. We pray for those who have broken their parents' hearts and wounded themselves and those around them. We pray that they may return home safe and whole. God, we continue to lift up our prayers for the people of Ukraine in our prayers for peace in the region. Caring God, we lift up in all the diverse needs, all of our brothers and sisters this day. We pray with thankfulness for those prayers already answered and with hearts of hope for those things yet to be. Hear us as we lift up before you those people and those situations which have been spoken aloud. And hear us as we now in the silence lift up others that you have placed on our hearts. God, we thank you for all that you have been, all that you are, all that you shall be in the lives of your people. And we ask all these things in the name of Christ Jesus, he who is our Lord and brother and friend, even as we pray together the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us sing together our prayer response.
Friends, we are called upon to be ambassadors of Christ's love. Our financial offerings are just one of the ways we're able to carry out God's purposes in our ministry together. Today, we have an opportunity to, as ambassadors of Christ to share our financial and other resources to help support the many missions and ministries of this congregation. So we invite you to give generously as God gives generously to us as we receive this morning's offering. If you are here in person, there is an offering box in the narthex in the entranceway where you're invited to leave your gift. And if you are online, uh, your electronic or mailed in or dropped off offering is also very welcome. This morning, I wanna take up a moment to lift up one great hour of sharing. It's the special offering which we will collect next week. Uh, there was little handouts about one great hour of sharing next to the bulletins. If you didn't get one of those, please pick one up on the way out. Uh, One Great Hour of Sharing is the special mission offering of the United Church of Christ, which carries God's message of love and hope to people in crisis. The UCC works with international partners to provide sources of clean water, food, education and health care, small business microcredit, advocacy and resettlement of refugees, and emergency relief and rehabilitation. One Great Hour of Sharing also supports domestic and international ministries for Uh, disaster preparedness and response. And I want to just say that of every dollar given to One Great Hour of Sharing, 95 cents goes directly back out for direct support of mission programming. Uh, So next Sunday we're going to collect, there'll be offering, special offering envelopes, uh, a special offering for One Great Hour of Sharing during worship. And if you give online, you can do that simply by using the regular giving portal and just click special and write in one great hour of sharing. And so as our offertory this morning, I have a short video that highlights a little bit about one great hour of sharing. Why is love the greatest? Because love is action. Love is resilient. Love is compassionate. Love digs deeper, goes further, reaches higher. Love gives and then gives some more. Love is big and love is small. One great hour of sharing has been putting our love in action all around the world and right here at home for over 70 years by responding to disasters, feeding the hungry, digging wells for those who lack water, building for those who need shelter, caring for the sick, empowering the marginalized, and equipping those who are ready to change their world in the name of love, God's love. Because when all is said and done, it's love that remains. Put love into action. Give to one great hour of sharing. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, the 15th chapter. It's the familiar story of the prodigal son. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided the property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went out and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. 
But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. And so he called one of his servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in, and so his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered his property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, And everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad. Because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Thus ends our reading from scripture this day. May God lend understanding to our hearing of God's word. People love this parable of the prodigal son. Only one other parable is popular. That's the one of the Good Samaritan. And their popularity is based on the fact, I think, that they're so graceful, so full of grace. The parable of the prodigal son tells us how gracefully God will deal with our sins. The parable of the Good Samaritan teaches us to deal with one another gracefully. Because the world we live in often lacks grace. We have taught people to be assertive, only to learn how ugly a word assertive can be. The story of the prodigal son is full of grace. It opens with a young man asking his father for his share of the inheritance. It's a brazen thing to do, but young adults can do brazen things sometimes. The young man wanted his freedom. He had served his dad long enough. He'd followed the rules long enough. Now he wanted to go see what he could do on his own. In that time and place, the father had certain rules that he had to follow. The law required him to give his older son a double share of the inheritance, so he could only give this younger son one-third of the estate. The son, taking his share of the inheritance before his father's death, was acknowledging that he would assume the responsibility to help provide for the father in the father's declining years. The story doesn't give all the details. I'm sure the father endured some sleepless nights before he figured out how he would respond to his son. Every parent goes through the agony of trying to decide how tightly to hold on and how much you can let go. But after consideration, the father decides to honor his son's request. Unlike the father, the son had no trouble deciding what to do. He quickly departed for a city where he made many new friends. After all, he was buying. The money was burning a hole in his pocket. Anyone with money to burn will easily find someone to help tend that fire. And this young man found friends who were glad to help him spend his money. How did they spend his money? Jesus said that he squandered his property in dissolute living. Uh, Wine, women, and song. It's an old story. Kind of a new story, too. But soon enough, the money was gone. I mean, how long does $50,000 last if you're buying everything for everyone in the bar? Not long. Not nearly as long as it took to save that money. In just a few weeks or months, the boy squandered the lifetime of work and sweat and tears and worry and careful saving by his father. In just a little time, he poured one-third of his father's life into the sewers. As often happens, when the money was gone, the friends were gone too. It often is. It depends on the basis of the friendship. If money is important to the friendship, then the end of the money is usually the end of the friendship. 
Way back in 1923, the song is almost 100 years old, Jimmy Cox wrote a song called Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out. Eric Clapton recorded it with Derek and the Dominoes back in 1970, and then he recorded it again in 1992 for an MTV Unplugged concert. Remember when MTV used to have music on it? <laughs> it's that version that I fell in love with. And Jimmy Cox wrote that song about those who achieve sudden fame or wealth, be it movie stars or recording artists or anyone really. And I wasn't able to get the rights to play Clapton's version of the song for you this morning, but I want you to hear just the first two verses of the words. Once I lived the life of a millionaire, spent all my money, I just did not care, took all my friends out for a real good time, bought bootleg whiskey, champagne, and wine. Then I began to fall so low, lost all my good friends, I don't have nowhere to go. If I get my hands on a dollar again, I'm going to hang on to it till that eagle grins. Because nobody knows you when you're down and out. In your pocket, not one penny. As for friends, you don't have any. And I think that's exactly the place that this younger son finds himself. When his money and his friends are gone, he found himself all alone, and what could he do? The only job he could find was slopping hogs, the absolute worst job that a good Jewish boy could have. And he was so hungry that the pig slop looked good. And then in a moment of clarity, he came to himself. He awakened his mind, which had been clouded since he hit the city, started to focus. He said, my father's hired hands don't live this badly. They have plenty to eat. And he started thinking, you know, if I'm contrite enough, remorseful enough, apologetic enough, pitiful enough, maybe my father will take me in as a servant. So he walks away from the pigsty. He points himself towards home. On the way, he kept practicing this little speech in his head. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. I wonder how many times he repeated that speech in his head on the way home, trying to get it just right so that it would work. And if his father refused to hire them, well, he tried not to think about what would happen then. But as the young man came within sight of the old homestead, his father saw him, was moved with compassion, ran and hugged and kissed him. The young man started to pour out his little speech, but the father turned to the servants and said, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put a ring in his hand, sandals for his feet, bring the fatted calf, kill it, let us eat and celebrate, this is my son who is dead but is alive again. He was lost, and now he's found. I think you have to have been a parent to experience fully the force of this father's joy. John Chiardi once wrote that every parent is at some time the father of the unreturned prodigal with nothing to do but keep his house open to hope. The lonely, tortured life it is to wonder where your child is, to listen for the phone, to buzz in your pocket, to pace the floor, to look one more time down an empty street, to keep your house and your heart open to hope. But now the son is home. Now all the months of worry are past. The father responds by throwing a great party. The elder son, the prodigal's older brother, was working in the fields hears music and dancing coming from the house. He asks one of the servants what's going on and is told what is going on back in the house and he is furious. He stayed at home. He plowed the fields. He tended the livestock. He kept his eye on the gold and his nose to the grindstone. And what is his reward? His reward is to get to attend a grand party for his no good younger brother who had disgraced the family. Now that the younger son had spent all of his money, he was home to try to live off his brother's money. The brother was fit to be tied. He said to his father, all these years 
I have served you, never disobeyed a commandment of yours, but you never even gave me a goat that I might have a party with my friends. But this, this, your son, he comes home after devouring his life with prostitutes and you fill, kill a fatted calf for him and throw a great party. With this, Jesus reaches the point of the story. The scribes and the Pharisees, good people, people just like the elder son, had criticized Jesus for eating with sinners, and so Jesus gave them this parable. He does several things in this parable. He tells us that God is willing to forgive our sins. He tells us that God is a loving parent who always waits, who always hopes. And he told us that there are always bloodless Hateful people like the elder brother, like the scribes and the Pharisees who measure life not by love, but by rules. People who cannot even say my brother, but instead have to say your son. It seems to me that nearly every day I get phone calls wanting to talk to me about my car's extended warranty. (laughs) And oftentimes they ask me to take a survey. And a couple of weeks ago, I got a call from someone who was conducting a survey who asked if I believed in the death penalty. I hesitated a bit and told him that I don't think that I do. And he asked why, and I started to tell him that I didn't think there were circumstances that justified ending someone's life, even if it deters crime, but then I stopped. And if I'm being honest, The real reason a small part of me favors the death penalty is because I want those people to have what's coming to them. Jesus tells a story which reminds me that I am sometimes exactly like the elder brother, which means I'm exactly like the scribes and the Pharisees. I'm exactly like those people who plotted and prodded the Roman soldiers to kill Jesus, and I find it very difficult to repent. So who do you identify with in the story? Are you the prodigal son with the misspent youth? Are you the loving father who only cares about the beloved? Or are you the elder brother, hard and uncaring and unforgiving? I suspect that each of us has a little bit of all three under our skins. We have done things we're not proud of. We've been hard and unforgiving. And we have sometimes gazed down the empty street, just hoping and praying that the beloved one will come home. I want you to notice that Jesus does not excuse the prodigal. He does not say that it's all right to burn through decades of hard work by your father feeding your most carnal desires. When Jesus met the woman at the well, he said, the first thing he said was, from now on, sin no more. But first, before that, he said, neither do I condemn you. And I think that's one of the points of the story, too. When we come to Christ, he says, neither do I condemn you, And thank God for that, because the gospel, the word gospel means good news. The good news is that God loves us enough to forget our sins and to welcome us home. The good news is that God is even able to forgive the elder son. And God can forgive me and you. I think it's noteworthy that When Jesus was dying on the cross, he had took a moment to forgive those who put them there. Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. So the good news is this, friends, no matter what you have done or not done, God stands ready to forgive. No matter what fortune or good thing you have burned your way through, no matter how you have mistreated yourself or others, no matter what the awful secret you've kept hidden in your deepest, darkest places is, God stands at the door, waiting, looking down the street, hoping against hope, praying that we will return. 
so that God can put a robe on our shoulders, the best robe, shoes on our feet, the fatted calf can be served in the tremendous party throne so that he can shower us with pent-up love. So whatever far country you find yourself in, come out of it today. Whatever stinking pigsty you find yourself in, leave it today. Whatever miles separate you from God, start walking them today. The first step is simply to acknowledge your need. Start your journey by coming forth, asking for mercy, and don't wait until tomorrow to begin living a forgiven life. Receive God's goodness and forgiveness and hospitality and pent-up love today. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is How Can I Keep From Singing? I invite you to stand as you are able. And the words will be on the screen.
friends in a moment I will offer our benediction as we prepare to close our worship service and then we will turn towards each other and sing our benediction response and, uh, and then we will have a moment of fellowship uh, behind me in Love Your Hall. You're invited to that. Uh, give a wave to the folks who are on watching on the live stream if you get a moment to do that. And then we will be on our way. So friends, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for being with us in worship this day, here or virtually. Go in peace. <laughs> he was so good. <laughs>